Welcome back to the final instalment of our Coin Geek Conversation Summer Specials. This week, we've chosen three interviews with some of the most fascinating educators in the Bitcoin SV space. Later, we'll be hearing from BitStocks and Gravity CEO Michael Hudson and Liz Liu, the writer of the ebook What is Bitcoin? But first up, we hear from Bitcoin Association's China manager, Li Li. Not only does she spearhead BSV's education mission in China, she also gives us a better understanding of the country's Bitcoin industry. Do you think that those of us from Europe or North America um, have a different idea about Bitcoin or a different way of working with Bitcoin? What is it that we need to understand more about the industry in China, do you think? Um, I think in China, you know, uh, maybe over half of the global big blockchain companies based in China, especially those mining companies, mining pools and uh, like exchange wallet. So in China, it's quite active. This field is quite active. Not those just uh, some developers or some uh, high tech companies, they get in touch with blockchain. But in China, mo like university students and uh, some companies and also a lot of developers, they also use their part time to do so, try to do some blockchain projects. So it's quite it's a more active field rather than uh, than any other countries. Which do you think is going to be the most useful and most used part of BSV that will encourage people into the ecosystem? Will it be the data storage or seeing it as money? Of course, the first one. The data. Yes, because I know some projects, especially uh, some projects in, in China, uh, their application is uh, to put some data, put some people's comment, put some people's article on the chain. And that also encouraged people to uh, like paying for what they read, which they thought is valuable. So it's like uh, we put some uh, traditional internet behavior on the blockchain world. Like people have to be responsible for their behaviors. And that's also a change to the whole society in the future. So I think that part is that changed the world the most. Also, the like the electronic payment is also very important that it cross the border and you can everyone can use it with their smartphone and it's more convenient to the commerce. So both very important. I wonder whether Chinese users will be more willing to jump into a micropayment system. Yes, you know, uh, I know a lot of foreigners, foreign friends, they when they came to China, they were shocked by people only take their smartphones to go out because now we can pay everything with our phones, you know, Alipay and also WeChat Pay that all the merchants, they accept that. Even, even though you only uh, pay less than one yuan enough to buy, uh, maybe to pay a tiny uh, service fee, it's still okay. You don't, br you don't need to bring your wallet and the cash. You so, don't need to right. get that change or the coins. So in a way, because you already have that culture, yes. switching into using a Bitcoin SV wallet will almost not be noticed. In China, because people, the new generation, they accept new things very fast. There are more and more well-educated young people and they love high tech. And uh, lots of young people, they, uh, take, they, they majored in like uh, computer science. So I think people will get more easy to accept blockchain or, and also Bitcoin. There you go, Lise Li and the amazing work she does in spreading the word about BSV in China. Next up is Michael Hudson of Bitstocks. In this interview, Michael shares the importance of his company's media component and their guiding philosophies, which he sums up in three E's, 
educate, empower, and evolve. Let's listen in. Let's talk about Bitstocks, mm -hmm. your company. For people who haven't heard of it, I read on the website that its basic mission is to simplify the process of investing in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Tell me a bit more about how you do that. So, uh, Bitstocks and the advisory desk is what you're referring to, uh, is what we started off with. That was back in April 2014. And the mission really was back in April 2014 was, this is a great new innovative technology. It's got great promise to bring transparency and clarity to our financial systems. Um, let's spread awareness. Let's make people understand what the technology is. Let's help people understand the pre-existing financial system for what it is. And let's explain to people in a way that everyone can understand whether you're a hedge fund manager or a warehouse manager in the same breadth of why is this technology important? How does it fit? And then get financial exposure to that technology. And we took care of the whole process as a turnkey solution. So an institution or a rich individual would basically come to you like they might have gone to a stockbroker in the past or something and that you would handle everything for them. Absolutely, <laughs> right? And especially when you have a new technology like uh, Bitcoin, for me, I have a philosophy of, I learn to teach and I teach to learn. So for me, if I feel like I've got knowledge on a subject matter, I, I can only test it by regurgitating it to other people. And if you have someone who say, a 70-year-old individual, six-year-old individual, which conventionally people wouldn't put into the box of being a Bitcoin investor. Um, well, why, is it, why can't that person be a Bitcoin investor? Well, maybe it's how you've articulated the subject of, of mm. Bitcoin that you can't get it on the back of, say, a post-it stamp and say, OK, this is why this is important. And it's a great challenge for me as an individual to be able to learn how to articulate the message of Bitcoin to such a diverse uh, client base and diverse group of individuals and I feel like now that early initiation of our business model has helped me now communicate to a wider broader audience because everyone wants to get it and I think everyone needs to be treated uh, with an equal amount of respect of where their state of understanding is and if we can't get over that hurdle of even explaining uh, Bitcoin then I think there'd just be a huge challenge of implementing Bitcoin at a much larger scale. The emphasis in the community of Bitcoin mm. SV isn't on buying the coin in order to accumulate because it's mm. gone up in value. Mm. But as I understand it, that is what you, that is the, still the service you offer to your mm -hmm. customers mm -hmm. in the way that you mm -hmm. did right at the beginning. Is that right? Absolutely. So how do you reconcile the idea that actually what would probably be best to get BSV adopted in many different areas would be of just price stability, mm -hmm. which wouldn't actually be the best for your clients. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we've got a long way to go until we've got price stability, right? And there's a whole wealth of opportunity leading up to way to price stability. But the most important aspect, if you trawl through, say, my social media, uh, my posts, videos that I've posted out there, I've never been a guy that's been aggressively speaking about the price. Right. I can very confidently say that on camera that people could go through all of my social media content. I've never been a pumper of price ever. And the message that I've always put out there is technology, 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 build, 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 understand what it's here for. And what people are ultimately investing in is the infrastructure of ultimately the new world. That really is the true potential of where Bitcoin can go. So from an investment standpoint, absolutely people need to get exposure, but understand why you need exposure. Otherwise, it becomes a gamble, it becomes a punt. Supposing I've just uh, signed up with BitStocks mm. and uh, I've got some money to invest mm -hmm. and I speak to my broker today when the price is right up, would they be saying, well, hang on, perhaps we'll just wait till yes. it comes down a bit? Yes, yes, yes. Right now, with all the hype um, and the fact of what I just said, being in no man's land, you'd want to wait until the market resets itself. We get a new real reference of measure. Right. Um, and that really is the an important aspect of the service that we provide there is a lot of people are very much fueled on emotion. What our job is to do good day, bad day, is to stay neutral right. Right, and just provide that clarity and understand that it is really to a degree around capital preservation uh, as well. That's the number one rule to invest in, mm. which many people forget about. Mm. Preserve capital, rule number two is it, get return on your capital. Yeah, but yeah. preservation is a really important aspect. And I think 
2018, a lot of lessons were learned across the board, even lessons for us were learned uh, as well. So well, when the price went yeah, shooting just, down, just very aggressively blew a lot of steam off uh, the market. But and this is where having your own compass of discernment and your own voice mm. is really important, really, really, really important, which is why we say it quite a lot on our own media channel that irrespective of what subject matter is that I'm speaking on, I don't care how authoritative I sound when I speak on these subject matters, I should never be taken at 100% authority. The fact there is all that sort of uh, stuff to be avoided in the industry, at mm. least it gives uh, you, as Bitstocks, a really clear role yeah. and a job to do, doesn't yeah. it? If, if everything was squeaky clean, yeah. Yeah. you'd be sort of, there would be less mm. work for you. Yeah, no, 100%, and this is why I say, and I maintain, I genuinely believe that our media arm of Bitstocks is such an important component because uh, this is about our philosophy is three E's uh, educate, empower, evolve. Educational aspect is why we built and established and continue to build aggressively Bitstocks Media. Our uh, empower is our gravity ecosystem, our tool of sovereignty to help people uh, achieve financial sovereignty. And the evolve aspect I haven't really spoken about much, but that's about okay, what can we do as a company, organization, a collective? to entice people to join us on this mission for the betterment of humanity and to invest in technologies that are in the betterment of humanity. Because I've said and I've maintained quite aggressively that Bitcoin is one component. There are other things required in coordination and combination with Bitcoin that really will have some massive breakthroughs for humanity. And what, what sort of things do you think? Energy. Of? Right. Uh, is, is Everything has to begin with E. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Very good. Michael Hudson there, always a treat to hear from him. And last but not least, we have Liz Lowe, a digital marketing and content strategist and writer of What is Bitcoin? Let's find out more about the ebook and the inspiration behind it. I would say it, this ebook is the fruit of at least three years of research. But um, this, this is the great thing about digital marketing. We, it's a digital resource that we can rewrite when it becomes necessary or outdated, and we will continue doing so. I was really interested in the, the way that you sort of started really from way back, um, talking about how the crypto sector was in no way sort of invented by the Craig Wright and Bitcoin, that it in the 1990s, there were a whole lot of cryptocurrencies. I mean, Craig has talked about this as well, to some extent, and um, that it was worth a trillion dollars, um, which is actually more than it's worth today. And then suddenly that all came to an end. I mean, can you just give us a little idea of what, what was going on with all that? Well, actually, uh, my my source for that section was Craig Wright himself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he delivered a presentation to a, a coin geek um, audience, a gaming audience particularly, in which he told the story. And so, in throughout my research, um, a lot of my sources were video based. Right. And I, I would pick up these stories and. And I struggled with this idea, but how can I communicate these facts to get the audience to grasp its significance? When we, we are in a market where there's so much misinformation and in, in conversations with friends who are in the film industry, also communicating such ideas, I realized I would have to tell some stories because that is how what humans, our, our brain, this is what neuroscience tells us, we depend on stories to craft meaning. And um, although not every chapter has taken this narrative format, I, I certainly try to bring it in there, realizing that's how humans operate. Towards the end of your book, you draw a comparison with the dot-com revolution and the failure of quite a lot of uh, startups at that time and that we shouldn't expect too much of the early development of Bitcoin, Bitcoin SV you're referring to really, because that process of enterprise 
uh, entrepreneurship and then sometimes failure is part of the part of the growing of a new um, a new sector. Tell us about that comparison you were making with the, the dot com startups. Well, I think um, the important concept here is there's a distinction between the infrastructure and the applications that are built on top of it. And the infrastructure is developing and the applications that are built on it today might be gone tomorrow, but we'll see more sophisticated applications in future. So we, we have to make that distinction. And um, although it, it's not a metaphor I used in this book, in, in another of our blog posts on Bitcoin, I refer to one that Jeff Bezos used in the early days of the internet. And he compared the internet to the electric revolution, where he explains that when electricity was installed in homes, they didn't think of it as electricity, it was for lighting, it was to light up the home. And the only fixtures inside the house that was connected to the electric infrastructure were light bulbs. But this, of course, created the opportunity for inventors to invent loads of other electric ap applications. And so today, I mean, electricity, it powers almost everything around us. It's, it's so much more than that, just the light bulb. And so this, this is the distinction I, I've come to see is important to make, even though it's very exciting to see the applications running on Bitcoin SV today, and their groups, their uh, growth rate is skyrocketing, um, certainly compared to any other Bitcoin node implementation. But it doesn't, it can't compare to what we'll see in a year's time or five years' time. It is, um, it's opening doors to a new world. And you can request Liz's free ebook through a link below this podcast. There we go, our top picks for educators in the Bitcoin SV ecosystem. Thanks for joining me, Natalie Mason, on the fourth and last of our summer special series. Be sure to join Charles Miller next week for another episode of CoinGeek Conversations. Goodbye. Imagine in 1997 paying for something with your watch. Remember the last time you used cash? The world has been digitized, almost. Cash was once seen as the last bastion for reform, but now is on the decline. Digital transactions have outcompeted hard currency since 2017 in the UK, but breakthrough bold technologies like blockchain have revolutionized more than just money. Disruptive technologies call for disruptive lawyers, ones that not just accept the current, but find new ways of interpreting the law. We are currently the only global law firm with a real track record in the area of Bitcoin and blockchain. We are results driven and care only about securing the best possible result for our clients. We trace the supposedly untraceable. We pioneer the future of law. We deliver new solutions. We are law changers.